If you have been recording into Ableton Live and have noticed an extreme amount of latency or delay on your recorded audio, then this video is for you because I'm going to be showing you how to fix and minimize that latency when you're recording into Ableton Live. So let's go ahead and just jump right into it. All right, everyone, Sam Smyers here. Welcome back to the channel. And if you're new here, please consider giving this video a like and subscribing to the channel. Today, I'm gonna to be going over an issue that I have noticed whenever I record into Ableton Live, and that is this delay or latency on the actual recorded audio signal. Whenever I'm playing guitar, I feel like I'm on time, but then all of a sudden I look at the session and it's off time, it's off the grid pretty substantially, and then I have to move it back or possibly warp it into place. And there is actually a workaround to this, and you're probably doing the same thing that I was doing wrong. So I'm gonna go into how to fix this issue. Now, latency is just gonna be the delay between when audio goes into your computer and when sound comes out. There, unfortunately, is always going to be latency whenever you're using an audio interface and taking an analog signal and converting it into a digital signal or vice versa, digital to audio. There's always gonna be latency. So unfortunately, you can't get rid of latency altogether. But I want to show you this other larger issue of this more substantial delay or latency in Ableton Live. Now, what I have here is I have an empty track. What I'm going to do is I took the metronome and I'm sending the metronome back into this track and I'm going to record the metronome and show you how off this metronome is. You would expect it to be exactly on beat. In my preferences, I'm going to set the buffer size to 2048 and that is the max buffer size. You wouldn't want to really record at the max buffer size because of that latency that will obviously happen, but I'm going to just set it here so that I can exaggerate this example. Now I'm gonna go ahead and record this metronome here. All right, so you would expect this to be exactly on beat and notice how it is way off. It's so far off beat, it's basically unusable. Now, what is going on here? Basically, anytime that you are monitoring your audio, your signal that you are recording, there's going to be this substantial latency or this delay. And that happens whenever you have this set to auto or in. And this is gonna happen no matter what the buffer size is. I can go to my options here and I can turn this delay compensation off. Same thing, I could turn it back on and I can also have this reduce latency when monitoring checked and same thing, it's still going to be delayed. I could even go to my preferences here and I could reduce the buffer size to the minimum buffer size of 32 samples and it's going to reduce it a bit And that's usually what you would think to do is to reduce the buffer size. But of course, if I zoom in, you can see that it's still off beat. And at 32 samples for your buffer size, I don't even know how a session could work at that small of a buffer size. So let's go ahead and just duplicate this track. And let me show you what you are going to have to do. If I set this to off and I go ahead and record this, now I'm going to record both of these. Now let's go ahead and zoom in. Now we see that this one is a lot closer to the beat than the one that is set to auto. And this is at the smallest buffer size. Let's go ahead and just set the buffer to something that we probably will actually be using like 512 samples. And we can see that it's still staying pretty close to the beats. There is still some latency and that's just gonna happen because of the nature of the beast but it's not going to be as substantial as this one up here. And if you're doing something that's electronic and you need to be exactly on beat, then you can always just adjust it. Or what I like to do is go into the sample editor here, select it all, and then do command U, and that will put everything on beat. And let's just go ahead and solo this. And we can hear that that metronome now is exactly in time compared to this other one which obviously is way off. So now you're probably wondering, well, how am I supposed to hear myself whenever I'm recording if I can't monitor myself? Well, the only solution really is to monitor your input directly from the audio interface. If you have a universal audio device like an Apollo, then you'll probably have console and you can actually monitor your input directly from the audio interface using console. And you can also put some effects on it so that it's not a dry 
guitar tone that you're listening to or a drive vocal. If you have another audio interface, then you are unfortunately gonna have to listen to that dry input signal. I have a Focusrite and I can actually blend the input monitoring with the output that's coming from the Ableton Live. So I can listen to that input signal, but it's going to be a dry signal. There's nothing going to be on it, no effects. So it wouldn't really be ideal for a singer. Now, the workaround of what I would recommend you do if you don't want to do input monitoring from your audio interface is this. Let me go ahead and grab my guitar and I'll show you. All right, I have my guitar. You probably can't see it in the video. Here it is. And I'll go ahead and play it for you. And let's go ahead and check my guitar track. I have some effects on it just to get that guitar tone. What I would do is I would set this to in or auto. Whenever I have it record enabled, I could do auto. And then I can hear it. Then what I could do is duplicate this. And then for this duplicate track, I could set this to off and actually record this off track. And let's go ahead and just record both of these. Okay, not the greatest guitar performance, but let's go ahead and zoom in and check this out. Now we can see the difference here. We can see that this bottom one where I had the monitoring off is further ahead to the left than the second one where I have the monitoring on. And even though I did play that early, that's actually going to be in time. If I actually, if I actually played it in time, that will be right. And then what you could do is you could just, and let's go ahead and turn that off. What you could do then is just delete this. Or if you wanted to use this guitar track, then you could just drag this one up like that and replace it. And I could label this the guitar monitor and then this one the guitar record. And what I could also do is I could just set the input to in and then I wouldn't need to record two different tracks and just use this first track to listen to the guitar. But you just have to remember to turn this in to off when you're done recording so that you don't always get that input coming in. And there I just recorded the guitar and it's not having all that latency because I'm using this first track to monitor it and then the second track to actually record it. And now my guitar is buzzing. I'm gonna go ahead and turn this to auto so it stops buzzing. And that's basically the workaround that I would do is I would set up two different tracks, one to monitor and then one to actually record and just duplicate the effects on those two tracks if you have effects on it and want to hear your input with some effects on it, like if you're recording a vocal or in that example, a guitar. All right, guys, that just about does it for this video. I hope that that was helpful. And if it was, please go ahead and give this video a like and subscribe to the channel because that will help you stay updated with future videos that are just like this. And if you want to really improve your mixing skills, then check out my Modern Mix Academy. I'll put a link down below for you to check that out. And that is just a full online mix course that will help you make the best records of your life. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.